Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel and we are going to extend the part 1 of the LLM chatbot deployment video. So this is going to be the part 2 of that video and here in this video we are going to basically see that how we can utilize the uh, docker image that we have pushed to Azure Container Registry how we can use that to deploy within an app service or a container instance so let me show that guys so what I'm gonna do here is first show you the container registry you can see here I am on Microsoft Azure account which is my personal account it's a pay per go subscription if you have free credits you can also use it but a few of the services would require you a few dollars you know to work with this video not much uh, but it, it's going to be very uh, it's going to be very meaningful even if you invest a few dollars you know just for your learning purpose so it can help you at your workplace or in your upcoming whatever you are doing with artificial intelligence or machine learning so let me now uh, click on container registries and here you can see that we have something called AI anytime which is our repository uh, registry name sorry and within that registry you can see we have something called repositories now when I click on repositories so in previous video the part one of this video uh, if you see the last portion of the video we were pushing our uh, docker image that we created locally uh, to this repository Okay, now you can see that when I click on images chatbot IMZ, now you can find out the last updated date, tag count, manifest, etc. Okay, now this is the latest tag. So if you don't give any tag, when you are tagging it, it will automatically assign a latest tag to it. Now if you are, if you want to keep, you know, uh, making changes in the same Docker image, if you are building it again, you can, and if you are pushing it after a few days, maybe you can give it a tag 1.0 or 0.0 or something like that, depends completely how you want to do it. Now when you click on latest, you will be able to see all of your layers, you know, you can see all of your manifest over there, that's what, that's what we call it, manifest. And now you can see uh, all the required not required all the details in the manifest if you go to referrers there's nothing inside it and yeah and this is how you can also pull it now suppose if you have deployed this excuse me so you're not deployed if you have pushed this image within this container registry and at your workplace or some of your friends right in the same team or even in the other team if they have access to it now they can pull this you know image and they can run it within their uh, uh, infrastructure or whatever machine that they are on okay they can pull the image from there now if you have pushed this on docker hub you, you will also see a similar thing on docker hub as well right on your profile or your repository you can pull this image in your system and you can run it the same way we, we were running it locally in the first video first part of this video so I'm not going into that you can copy it here and you can do that now this is how it looks like now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this for deployment. So there are three ways you can deploy it uh, as a reference. First is within a, within a container instance. Now I'm not going to do that container instances thingy because you know, it, it's a little costly for me. So I'm not going to use container instance right now. But I will show you how it looks like. It's pretty much straightforward and the simplest way of deploying your doc, Docker based applications or solutions that you have built okay, or you have pushed to either Azure Container Registry or Docker Hub, okay, or anywhere else as well. You should just have access to it. You should have an authentication mechanism to connect with that container registry, either it's on AWS as well. Now, if you see, it says create container instance. So when I click on this, create container instances, it will take me to again, the uh, something like, uh, you know, how you can create a container instance. You can select on resource type. So for example, I click on resource group AI anytime. Now I'll give a container name here, chatbot, something like that. It will show you all green validation passed. And now, now there are a couple of things that you should see here. Okay, uh, the first is, let's keep a standard as an SKU. Okay, and now we have something called Azure Container Registry. Now when you click on Azure Container Registry, it will automatically show you all the uh, registry. If you have multiple registry, if you have multiple images, it will list it down. For I already have one. So it's just showing me by default okay now if you have other registry so in other registry 
either you will have a public or a private image type so you should have at least the authentication there you can see you can give your image over here for example if you are you know docker hub you can just give something like that you know the repository uh, that uh, url from there so i'm not going to do that I'm, i'll just show you the azure container registry and here you can select your image you have your image tag if you have multiple tags for example 1.0 2.0 you can select the particular image tag for this repository uh, for this uh, image and now we have os type by default linux and now probably you would like to increase the size for this kind of applications if you have llm powered application 1.5 gig gigabytes of memory is very less you know to uh, basically inference uh, on this so you will increase it so you can click on change size it maximum is 32 gigabytes you can see it over here and number of cpu cores as it so you can change depending on what kind of app or solutions you want to deploy and that's it when you click on review and create it will give you a public url that you can try it out with very simple straightforward thing you don't have to make a lot of changes here you know now i'm not going to do this i'm going to show you app service so i'm just going to click ok app. i'm not going to do that okay so in app service now you can see it says no app services to display so app service is one of azure you know uh most used services uh, when it comes to uh, Microsoft Azure as a cloud. Now, when you click on create, if you click on drop down, you have three options. So, within an app service, you can either create a web app, you can also create a static web app where your data is very static, the websites kind of a thing, you're not going to change the pages, you can have a static web app, and then you can also have connection with your databases. So, your SQL database or any different kind of database, you can do that. So in this, I'm just going to click, click on web app. So when I click on web app, it will again come here uh, to this configuration thingy here. So I'm just going to call it chat with PDF. Now this is my uh, app service name, app name, chat with PDF dot Azure websites dot net. This is how the URL will look like and this is the URL will access it. Now this is tricky. So in the publish, either if you select code, then you have to either push it through some remote machine, some SSL, some FTP, etc. The way you want to push your code to this uh, uh, app service, you can do that. But I'm going to use a Docker container. I want to use my Azure container registry and the repositories and the image that I have within that repository, right? So I'm going to use Docker container as a way of deploying this app service, okay, the app. And then you have a static web app. I'm not going to click on this. Let's keep operating system as Linux. It's okay to have Linux here. And it's okay to have region as East US. I'm just going to keep that. Now, here are the Linux plans. So if you click on Linux plan, I'm just going to okay with this uh, new because it's already, it's automatically creates it because I'm doing it for the first time. Now, pricing plan is important. Uh, so let's click on, for example, you can see all the price, pricing plan. If you have a very simple Python application which does not have much dependencies, you can go with free, you know, for your hobby projects. You can also go with basic if you want a little more memory on it. You know, you can look at uh, a basic. You can also look at premium of 8 GB memory or something like that. You can also see the pricing, or pricing per month. Let's keep premium for now and I will delete it, of course, after the video. I'm not going to keep it on. It's, it's costly affair, as you know, right, deploying... Uh, in production the applications are uh, it's, it's cost us a bit so i'm not going to do that and that's it now the next thing is important so when you click on uh, docker here the next configuration is docker now on docker you can see the again the option that we saw in container instance now here i'm not going to use docker compose if you, you know, it's in preview state right now but you can use docker compose now I'm going to click on Azure Container Registry here, but if you can also use Docker Hub, if you want to push it on Docker Hub, you can also use private registries. You know, if you have your registry somewhere else, there are a lot of infrastructure as a service or a software as a service provider or a platform as a service provider where they use, where they provide all these uh, uh, registries where you can push your Docker images. Now I'm going to click on Azure Container Registry here and it will automatically pull the image for me because I only have one registry and one image. So you can see it says registry AI anytime, the registry that I have a single registry and then in the image we have chatbot IMZ, the same image and then I have, you can also put startup command. If you are on fast API kind of a thingy then you can might, you might put here like ubicon run or something like that, you know, it depends. I'm not going to do that here guys. 
Now let's go on net networking. I'll keep it default. Like this is application inside. No, otherwise it will cost me a bit. I'm not gonna do that. And this is okay. And I'm gonna create in the tags is fine you know it's all right and the review and create so when you review and create you know you can see and i click on create it will take a little time you know to create and deploy so i will when i click on create here so it will de start deploying my app it will pull the image from that container registry it will create the infra for me automatically and it will deploy within it that app service and then we'll access the app guys once i will then again i will so I will pause the video here because once I click on create, it will take little time. You can see it says initializing deployment. You can see over here on the notification tab on top. So I'm going to pause the video here and let's come back uh, once it is done. I will show you the dashboard, how it looks like. So let me pause the video and I will resume. So as you can see guys that uh, it has been successfully deployed and you can see here chat with PDF, which is a web app as we have deployed this through an app service. Azure app service okay and you know you can see uh, the overview here this is our default domain chat with pdf dot azure websites dot net we will open that in a bit so you can see all of the details like the location the status the resource group etc okay and you have your properties and all of other details now if you want to set a custom domain you would have been working in for example with some IT companies or if you are part of a startup and if you even if on a hobby project if you want to have a custom domain for whatever reason you can also click on add custom domain and you can link your custom domain over here okay uh, right now it has with azure websites dot net and you have your all the IPs like outbound and inbound and virtual IP addresses now if you come down you can do a lot of other things as well here guys it's not an azure video uh, but if you are facing any challenges you can go to log stream where you can you know stream the logs if your app is not performing if it's giving you some error or something like that you can track that in the log stream as well and it has other features like configuration and you know the settings you can give you can set an application insights to keep a track of your application health etc now this is how it looks like the dashboard once you deploy this uh, in an app service okay you can play around with all these features like if you want to provide some access control in IAM you can also do that so you know authentication what you can do uh, you can provide an identity provider for example if you are working uh, in Microsoft as an example and you only want to give access to Microsoft employees or the people who are you know with Microsoft domain okay like for example xyg.microsoft.com okay so you can also put uh, that you know active directory over here add identity provider you can do that as well you know uh, over there so in this uh, chat with pdf now what we're gonna do we're gonna copy this copy to clipboard and i'm going to paste that here inside uh, uh, in url and i will you can also do a right click and open it as well and you can also open it from here so let me just do a click on this and it will open our application in a new tab now here we can upload our document guys right this is what we did when we built the chatbot locally and also within the docker container okay when we were running this app so you can upload your document here now suppose i upload this document fast facts which is climate change pdf i upload the document what it will do it will basically you know uh, have th we have three columns over here if you remember in the left hand side we had file preview in the middle column we had embeddings and in the right hand side we had the chatbot interface so you can see all the columns are have appeared right column one and co column two so in column one we have uh, the file details fast facts which is climate change pdf which is the file name and then we have embeddings are created successfully now this is running in production guys chat with pdf dot azure websites dot net that might take a little time when you are uh, running it for the first time you have to wait for a few minutes you know uh, when we are uh, when you click from here uh, default domain or the link that we have after deploying it in an app service it will take a little time for the first time okay now embeddings are created successfully and here you can ask your question like what is climate change or any question related to this document okay the document that we have uploaded over here and it happens on fly 
now it depends on what kind of machine you have so if the if you have bigger machine on azure when we are selecting that app service if you are deploying it through app service so if you want to upload a bigger file or multiple files or something like that after making some changes of course in the backend code then you have to take a bigger machine you know to make the inference or interact with it now let me just ask a question here so what i'm going to say is what is for example climate change and see if this works okay now once i click on this i'll just click, and you can see this is a streamlit chat interface that we have so we are also using a library called streamlit underscore chat uh, that when I have created this video locally, I have explained that in detail. You can watch that video. I'll give that link in the description. Now, what is climate change? And I'll ask this, uh, and we'll, we'll, we are hoping that we'll get some response from once we hit enter, guys. And you can see we got the response, guys, right? Climate change refers to the long-term alter, uh, alteration of global weather patterns and trends, primarily caused by human activities such as burning fossil fuels and deforestation. Fantastic. Right, so we deployed a chatbot that we built previously with a large language model, or rather, I'll say with a language model. We use Lamini language model for that, 738 million parameters, but it's good enough large. Okay, so there is a parameter that okay, if your model is bigger than one billion in token uh, parameter size, then it then it is called as a large language model. But we deployed this on Azure. This is what I wanted to show you. Okay, I hope you uh, understood that how you can deploy it. You can have a uh, you can have your image pushed to either Azure Container Registry or Docker Hub, and if it's it's and you can then create either an app service or a container instance, or you can also have a virtual machine. You know, if you want to create a VM, create a VM and then use that. Uh, docker image from there to just run it within that VM and it will you know it will probably run you can run this as a daemon okay so there are three different ways major ways now you can deploy it uh, through a container instance and app service and within a VM virtual machine and you can also orchestrate through Kubernetes services if you want to scale it further please go ahead and do that I will probably not do it because it will occur me it's a costly affair to do that right so I hope you understood and how you can deploy this uh, through a container technology or through docker as a tool uh, on a cloud so I'll give it the link in the description for the uh, github repository in this video and also the docker file previously so this is at the extension of the first video the part one so you can also refer to part one video the video I'll give the link in the description that's all for this video guys if you like the content if you like the video please hit the like icon and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet do subscribe a lot of things coming uh, on the channel uh, in generative ai mainly and please share your thoughts and feedback in the comment box so that's all you know for today's videos guys thank you so much for watching see you in the next one